by struggle. Um, struggle is defined in terms of one's attempt to overcome one's oppression. Right? Struggle is defined by my attempt as a member of an oppressed group to overcome my own oppression. Again, it's the oscillation back towards a recognized humanity. Right? If I have had my humanity robbed and have been dehumanized, then this process here, this swing backward, is identified as the struggle. Right? For Freire, this swing back towards a recognition of humanity after this, and remember we said it was first one and then two, number two is the struggle. Right? So Freire, so for Freire, this oscillation back towards uh, an insistence on recognizing one's humanity, specifically one from the oppressed group, is the process of struggle, is the struggle. Okay. Um, there are, however, limitations, right? So we know what the struggle is, and we'll talk about limitations. Alright, so what are some of the limitations of the struggle? Um, first, we cannot seek to oppress the oppressor as a consequence of one's liberation. What does that mean? You cannot seek to oppress the oppressor as a consequence of one's oppression. Well, um, this is where it would be great if I was an animator and I can do a little animation, but I can't do an animation, so I'll draw it the only way that I know. Imagine that we have this representation. Dehumanization, humanization, dehumanization. Uh, sorry. Dehumanization, right? So we have humanization in the middle and dehumanization on either screen, right? So dehumanization, humanization, dehumanization. The oppressor dehumanizes the oppressed group, right? The oppressor dehumanizes the oppressed group. The oppressed group struggles to regain their humanity. And we said that this was a struggle. In so far as we regain our humanity, what one of the limitations on this struggle, according to Freer, is, is that those who had formerly been the oppressor, we do not attempt to dehumanize them. Do you, you see how this works? So, we are, we, the oppressed group, were oppressed by, number one, this process of dehumanization. We struggle to maintain, not maintain, we struggle to regain, to recover, to be technical, we struggle, we struggle to recover our humanity. But insofar as we struggle to recover this humanity, a limitation of our struggle is that we do not then attempt to dehumanize those who were our former oppressors. Right? So basically what he's saying is that insofar as we attempt to regain our humanity, we do not oppress our, our, our former oppressors. Right? So that we stop, we recognize the humanity of both groups. So what he says is if there is a one right, and a two, a struggle, we stop here and we don't go to a three, right? Because three, this would be, one would be dehumanization, right? Two would be a struggle for our humanity, and three would be the oppression, O P P R. -E the oppression of the former, right? So now the, the oppressor, those who used to be the oppressor, have now been oppressed. Who have they been oppressed by? The new oppressor. Who are they? The old oppressed group. And it would just be swinging back and forth. You can see how this would swing back and forth, right? Those who had been oppressed now become the oppressor. Those who are now oppressed now become the oppressor, right? Back and forth. Um, and he wants to stop sort of this perpetual swing, this oscillation between the oppressed group and those who are the oppressor. The only way to do that is to recognize that um, and, and to impose, really, a limitation on the struggle. And the limitation that Freire imposes on the struggle is that once hum human humanization has been, has been attained, has been complete, we do not, we being those who were formerly oppressed, do not seek to oppress our former oppressors. Just quickly, um, in sort of genocide uh, studies, because there's application beyond just education pedagogy proper, there's sort of huge interdisciplinary uh, implications of Freire's text, which is why his text is so classical, 
and genocide studies, you can think of sort of the uh, the genocide uh, of Burundi, right? Tutsi versus Hutu, uh, Tutsi, Tutsi versus Hutu, right? Um, which was then followed by the genocide of Hutu in Rwanda, Hutu versus Tutsi, right? And then this other genocide, right? So the oppressed group from before now has power, and now they want to gain vengeance for their former oppression, and then they'll want to gain vengeance, and it's just this perpetual cycle of violence, right? The way you stop that cycle of violence, according to Fourier, though this is a little bit deeper, right? I don't want to get too deep just yet. But the way that you stop this cycle of vital violence, according to Freer, is to recognize the limitation of uh, our struggle as the oppressed group. Okay. Um, the task of the oppressed, right? So what is the task of the oppressed? And I'm not going to write this down. But um, the first task of the oppressed is to liberate themselves, right? And liberation, this is why this is liberation theory, and it's a very good liberation theory, right? Um, to liberate yourselves, right? You should recognize... At some point, not at this point, but at some point, you should recognize your oppression uh, and attempt to free yourself from uh, that oppression. The question, uh, however, becomes, you know, how do we understand, how does um, freer contextualize, make meaning of, gets, give significance to the idea of liberation? Um, and let's talk about that now. So I'm going to erase humanization. All right. Okay. So, how does uh, Freer give uh, meaning to the idea of liberation? Um, first, when we're talking about liberation, it is important to recognize that both the oppressed, right, both the oppressed and the oppressor, require liberation. You would think that it's only the oppressed group that needs to be liberated, right? But if you really take a little bit deeper stance and a, uh, sort of a deeper reflective approach to this analysis, if it's only the oppressed group that is liberated, the liberator loses its identity. If I define myself in terms of oppressing others, then if I want true liberation, I have to transform the way I identify myself. Right? I cannot effectively liberate a group, a group cannot effectively be liberated if the oppressor does not recognize the nature of um, his or her own sort of uh, uh, determination. I am determined insofar as my role as oppressor is to oppress. So I need to be liberated from my role as oppressor, right? But also, those who are oppressed need to be liberated from that oppression, right? So it's not just a liberation of those oppressed. I have to limit myself, I mean, I have to, uh, I, I, I have to um, liberate myself from the role of oppressing others, right? And from that role defining my existence, right? My uh, sort of ontological status, to be sort of tactical, my being as oppressor needs to be radically transformed, which is not easy to do. That's why Freer's book is so timeless, right? He's, the, 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 the mechanism in which we transform these roles is very, very difficult, right? Um, but we'll talk about how he does that. Um, so, as far as liberation, the easiest way to say that is that liberation of both oppressor and oppressed group. Okay, so the liberation of both the oppressor and the oppressed group. Um, the second bullet point is that liberation can only arise from those oppressed. This is not to say that the oppressed sore isn't liberated, but it starts, it's initiated, it comes from, it arises from the oppressed group, right? According to Freer, it is in that, remember what we said, in that affirmation, right? In that affirmation that liberation has its roots, right? Liberation has its roots in the affirmation. You will not disrespect me. You will not imprison me. You will not rape be, maim, torture my people. You will not do that. You will recognize me for a human being. That's the beginning of liberation, right? It is the affirmation, and obviously that affirmation starts, is rooted in the oppressed group, right? So it's originated, in a sense, 